On today's video, I'm going to check out this new MPPT solar charge controller from Dynes. It is a 40 amp model for 12 and 24 volt battery systems. Let's get right into it. So let me share some details of the charge controller, then show you what I've been encountering with this controller after running it for a couple of weeks. You can see fairly good size charge controller, nice cooling fins on the back, thick aluminum heat sinks on the back, user interface buttons right here in the front. You can see the max PV is 100 volts, which is good for 12 and 24 volt systems. A lot of your cheap, you know, cheaper charge controllers have a limit around 50 volts and different things like that. So I do like seeing a 100 volt open circuit panel capabilities for a 12 volt battery system. So there's your max PV power right there, 600 for 12, 1200 for 24, and of course charging at 40 amps and it's got a load circuit that is capable of 20 amps. And then the terminals on the controller are very generous in size. You could easily fit a four gauge wire on the PV or the battery or the load terminal. So they give you plenty of room to use large wiring on this controller if that's what you desire. And you see the controller has a decent LCD display showing you all your information right there. And it is also backlit. So if you touch one of the keys, it does have a backlight so you can see it in a dark environment, things like that. So I do like that. You can make some settings on the charge controller right here from the user interface buttons, but it's limited to what you can set up. So I'll show you the different settings you can put in here. So you select your battery type right there, more on this in just a minute, and then you can select your battery voltage. It auto detects, by the way. You can set your equalized voltage, you can set your boost voltage, you can set your float voltage, and that's about it. And you can set your equalized duration if that's what you're wanting to do. Uh, but very limited besides that. This is your over discharge recovery set point for your load terminals. I'm not using that. And there's your load terminal cutoff voltage point right there. I'll say I'm not using the load terminal. So none of those apply to me. That brings you back around. That's all the settings you have on the user interface right here. I'm a little disappointed that I cannot set up the controller fully with you know the setup buttons right here on the front of the controller. And I have to use Bluetooth, which that's fine. A lot of the new controllers are equipped with Bluetooth. This one is too. So I've been using Charge Pro 2.0 on a bunch of these controllers that have similar software, similar features, but let me show you what's going on with this one. All right, so I'm connected to the Bluetooth on this charge controller using Charge Pro 2.0, which is what a lot of these controllers use nowadays. As you can see, I'm logged in right here. Um, you can see you got 29 volts on the PV coming in, not making any power, just a little bit of reflective light right there. But you can see the tally right here for the day so far, all that good stuff. And the manual clearly states that more adjustability is available in the Bluetooth. So, you know, that's okay. You know, I knocked them already for not having full adjustability with the user interface buttons. But we'll go over here to the parameter settings. This is how you set up charge controllers and different things with Charge Pro 2.0. It comes pre-programmed with a lithium setting for the battery type. On these controllers, this style that used Charge Pro 2.0, I always go in and put my own settings in. You can see battery type right here. I've got it selected as use, user, so I can set my own parameters. Well, these aren't the parameters I want. So I've had trouble getting this thing to program. It's buggy or glitchy, whichever way you want to describe it. So it took me probably 50 tries to get it to switch from lithium to use, user settings right here. So these settings right here that's been changed, this is four, comes as 14.6, 14.6, 13 or something like that. I forgot what the actual original factory settings were in the user menu, but I had to go through here. I couldn't change them through the Bluetooth. I could change this, this, this setting right here like I showed you on the user interface buttons on the controller itself, but I couldn't change it through the Bluetooth. So let me demonstrate the problem I'm having. So go up here unlock okay so everything is unlocked so i can change my settings now awesome right okay so i don't really like those but i've got them set for now you know just running this controller just you know testing out i wanted to change my boost recovery voltage to 13.3 so right there 13.3 confirm right okay i'm not worried about over discharge recovery over discharge voltage right there i want the equalized charge time off so confirm that and then I want the temperature compensation off and equalized charge interval, zero days. You know, this is this is close. I can work with this. So I want to save it. So go down here, hit confirm. Now watch the values. All right, right back to 12.8, equalized time back to 120 minutes, temperature compensation back on. All right, well, let's say that I wanted to just change this over to a 
you know, lithium setting or something like that. So I'll just go right here to the lithium setting. You can see they very poor adjustability in this menu right here. So just a boost of 14.2 and, you know, very basic settings right here on their lithium program. So see lithium right there. I just want to, I want to change to that one, change it. So let's change it right here. See if it works. No, still on battery type use right there. Still the user menu. So you can see right there, back to what it was a minute ago. So let's do that one more time with something different just to show you what I've been encountering. So let's just go to a, a flooded lead acid battery. You can see right there, look at those settings. And it even goes back to auto voltage right there. So let me confirm that. See what that does. All right, confirm that. And then see, it goes right back to the user <laughs> menu. So, uh, all right, that's what I've encountered. But I can go in right here on the menu settings. I can change it right here. But remember, I've already told you, it only lets me change the three settings. And those are the three settings I showed you down here that I could adjust in the parameter menu. So, you know, those three settings right there, pretty much all you got with this controller. So I emailed the manufacturer, emailed tech support on this controller, trying to get it to actually accept its programming. So I told them I thought it had a bug in it. This wasn't letting the Bluetooth make any program settings. And I also told them everything I'm telling you. And they said, do a factory reset. So they did a couple of factory resets as advised by technical support at Dynes. So factory reset through the Bluetooth right here. So you go over here and you can go to the factory right here so you can go right here to factory settings recovery go through that i've cleared the historical data i've done everything you know they've told me to to try to get this controller to actually program itself with the bluetooth they said don't turn it off after you program it for a few seconds of course you know i've done everything that's supposed to be done and i have got no answers back from the company yet it's been crickets for over a week trying to find a solution, but I'm just letting you know that as of time of filming, this controller cannot be programmed with the Bluetooth besides those three voltage settings that you can change right here. And just for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna show you another 40 amp charge controller, a competitor model to this one. This is not the Dynas, this is a different one. You can see right here, see the same program set up, you know, same software and everything. So I'll show how easy it is or how easy it's supposed to be to change a setting. So I'm just going to change, let's change this one right here because I'm not really even using that one. So right there, just confirm that and show you how easy it's supposed to be. See success. So that's on a different controller. So you can see, obviously there's a bug in this one. So I don't think this is a good controller right now till they work out the bugs in it. Then again, this is version one. This is the first one that's released. It just came out. So maybe they made a boo-boo at the factory on the first batch. Hopefully they will correct it and maybe send a sample that is working properly or maybe some kind of update or something to me that I can put into here or something. But as of right now, I'm just showing you everything I'm seeing with this controller. But if you want to look into this controller or Dynas in general, I have a couple of links in the video description down below so you can check them out, check out this controller, various different things if you want to. But hope you enjoyed the video today. Hope it was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one. Special thanks to Dynes for providing this field testing sample for me to evaluate. Y'all got some work to do.